Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Longu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Longu. If you're new, uh, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Please keep subscribing, keep liking, keep sharing, keep commenting, um, and keep suggesting stuff. Uh, you keep motivating us by giving us stuff to react to and we're very very grateful for that like i said my name is Fanny Lungu. if there is something 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 that you really want us to react to don't be limited by what we've posted so far just comment down below we'll be very very glad to react to it you can find us on social media Fanny and jesse on facebook and instagram head over there say hi we'll say hi back we like to make friends you can check out our second youtube channel called Fanny and jesse 2.0 head there subscribe and enjoy the content that we actually put out so today i'm going to be reacting to Sadhguru and dr zaki naik at least it doesn't say this is so Sadhguru and dr zaki naik reviews on religion so without wasting time let's get into the video yeah, we heard about uh, that the vedas say that don't make any images of the god yeah whoever worships anything uh, which has been created throws himself in darkness right the difference between bhagwan and allah is that Allah says that if you worship anyone apart from me, I will punish you forever and ever. And I will not spare you of this sin. But nowhere in Hinduism's books would you see that Bhagwan is saying, okay, if you worship anything apart from me, you will be put in Narak, which is uh, the Hindi word for uh, hell, forever and ever. Now, what, why I'm saying that to you is, the concept of God in Islam, Christianity and Judaism is the same in which he feels bad if anyone worships anything else apart from him. But the concept of the other side of the religions, which is Hinduism, Buddhism, or those sides, the concept of God there, I think, is more, the God of those religions is more large hearted because he doesn't say to you that I'm going to put you in hell if you don't worship me. Although, although I understand that it is wrong to worship idols, it is wrong to worship created things. But I do feel that because that, uh, I, I somehow feel that, you know, Basically, God, there is nothing like him, right? So why in the Quran or the Bible or the Jews scripture, we are attributing a human uh, feeling to God that, let us say, my father gives me everything. He gives me all the money and I give that money to the poor people, right? Now, one day, if I forget my father, yeah, so my father will feel bad. But this is a human nature. God is more large hearted than that. Even if I don't worship him, he should have no problems. You know, he should not put me to hell because that's egoistic. Egoism is a part of human nature, not of God, is okay. what I feel, according to my uh, understanding. Yeah. That in Islam, if you don't do this, I'll punish you. That is a human nature. That if the father gives money to the son, son gives in charity, tomorrow the son doesn't ask about the father, the father feels bad. It's human nature, I agree with you. God is far superior, I agree with you. Yeah. So why does God feel bad? Yeah. Very good question, very intelligent question. Inshallah, you'll get convinced. I won't ask you to accept Islamian public. Oh, sure. <laughs> that we have done the yesterday. Yes. The Quran says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you, you require him. Now coming to the question. Now I'm making your question more easy. <laughs> Why we have to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest? Allah asks you to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Tomorrow if you don't say Allah is the greatest, do you think Allah will become less? No. No. Yeah. Whether you say or not, Allah is already the greatest. Irrespective whether you say or not, it will make no difference, not even an iota of difference. He is already the greatest. He will remain irrespective whether you say or not. Why does he ask you to say that is the question. The question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the human psychology. For example, your mother has a heart attack. And now, you have heard of a very famous heart specialist in the world. If you know he's famous, he will give you some advice for your mother. Another person who's unknown, he comes and gives you advice. Whose advice will you follow? Uh, repeat again, sorry. Uh, if? if your mother has a heart attack, yeah. there's a person who you know is the most famous heart specialist in the world. I would follow the advice of the specialist. Why? Because you know he's number one, he's most famous. Yeah. So the reason Allah asks you to praise him is not for his benefit, it's for your benefit. Because the moment you praise Allah, you will follow his advice. Agreed. By following his advice, Allah will not benefit, you will benefit. Yes. By the doctor giving advice to you, he will not benefit. Yes, you may give him fees, so that way he'll benefit. You aren't giving any fees to Allah. Yeah. So Allah doesn't benefit anything. But the moment you praise him, it is human. When you say, Allah is the most wise, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most merciful. Most wise, ah, he gives advice, I'll follow. Most greatest, I'll follow him. Most merciful, I'll follow him. 
so you'd say all these praises not to benefit him to benefit yourself agreed yes. so when you worship him mm -hmm. it does not benefit him it benefits you yes. when you follow the advice of the doctor mm -hmm. it will benefit if you give him fees yes yeah. you don't give any fees to allah yes it benefits you yes so same way allah is large hearted yes. by punishing you hmm. do you think he will benefit no why why no, no, that's okay no that's okay i'm i'm talking about Wait, god being egoistic on his own he self he is not egoistic at all no but he is saying if you, makes... if you do shirk then i will put you in hell fire forever and ever i'm not saying no. that he should not punish wrong deeds but he is putting on his own self that if you associate partners with me along with worshiping me if you worship someone else even then i will not forgive you that's the right thing that's, because that's if, egoism if the doctor says yes if suppose the heart specialist tells your mother see this is a good thing have only this medicine nothing else someone else says okay have this medicine also so that heart specialist tells you if you mix it with something else your mother will die so will you listen to somebody else or not will you listen or not heart specialist is saying don't have anything else except this sorbet rate keep it below your tongue yes now another doctor comes you know i am a very good doctor you don't know him also mm. will I you listen, listen to heart specialist correct yes heart specialist specialized but god is a big heart specialist so heart specialist you want to follow you don't want to follow your creator who created your heart what kind of wait 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 let me complete yes let me complete yes yes, yes. so you being logical yeah. when you want to follow the heart specialist when the heart specialist tell you don't listen to anyone else because they are told you the total truth that heart specialist can be wrong because he is a human being almighty god when he says do not worship anyone else besides me he knows that if you think somebody else is also the greatest hmm. and if you follow and follow something wrong it will harm you god does not want to see to it that his creation the harm he is going out of the way to give you an ultimate warning other sins maybe i will forgive hmm. that is one type of murder is one type of sin very wrong second largest but one if you worship somebody else you can do anything you can start murdering you can start having drugs you can start raping it's too dangerous hmm. this is the guidance it is complete because he is the creator he knows no one else is the creator now someone else tries to behave like a creator when god knows no one else can create you it is very dangerous that's the reason he says that following advice worshiping anyone obeying anyone as the creator not obeying normally normally on obey a father no problem obey a mother no problem going against the commandments of almighty god that worshiping is what, somebody that else. is what i'm trying to find out is that the right god who is saying that if you associated partners with me i will never forgive this sin you are taking it's a catch 22 i am questioning whether a god who thinks like that is that the correct god correct god you are saying you are saying he is the correct god hence why? he knows why 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 yes. i have checked up with science this quran passes yes. the test when i put science to your hindu scriptures it fails yes. when i put science to bible it fails hmm. so even if i agree with you with my earlier question hmm. maybe this is ambiguous fine hmm. 80% is proved to be 100% correct 20% hmm. is ambiguous inshallah logically even this will be right if i have to put that way but the other way if a doctor who saw the other argument would be ki 100% is correct 100% of it is proved that it is correct if 20% ambiguous is there i tell you one thing brother your mind hasn't reached that level my mind hasn't reached that level right the science hasn't reached that level maybe 100 years after or 1000 years after it will be proved 100% correct we are limited the problem is in you and me not in the quran now uh... what you unfortunately know as religion in the world today is just somebody's belief systems somebody believes god is round somebody believes god is square somebody else believes he's a triangle that's the situation isn't it and you must understand this once you start believing in something which is not yet a reality for you you are bound to be in conflict with somebody else because somebody else is bound to believe something else no 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 i believe in my god but i am not a violent person i will not fight with anybody all this is just make up if they provoke you sufficiently you will fight like for example let's say you believe god has four hands i believe god has no hands these are two belief systems tomorrow out of your love for god you put a 100 feet sta tall statue in coimbatore city of course with four hands 
But suddenly I feel so hurt. These four hands look so ugly because God actually has no hands because that's my belief. So tonight I will go to that statue, I don't intend to cause any damage to your God, just to make him the way he really is without hands. So I just cut off the four hands. Tomorrow what will happen to you? You want to cut off my hands, isn't it? Simply because you believe one thing, I believe something else. As long as people believe in something, conflict is inevitable. Because you may say, no, no, we are all brothers, we are all one, we are all, everything is okay with us. All this bye-bye stuff, when we really have to come to a point, when I believe what I believe is right, I will try to manifest it. I will try to make it a common thing everywhere, isn't it? Yes? Once I believe what I believe is the truth, naturally I will try to impose it on other people. I don't call it imposition, I call it saving you from ignorance. Yes or no? Once I firmly believe that this is the way God is, I will try to put it on to you, just to save you, not to hurt you. But you will get hurt because any imposition hurts. When you resist, I will use other methods to put it into you, <laughs> whatever those methods are. Sword has been used, money has been used, every kind of inducement has been used, isn't it? Simply because I believe one thing, you believe another. Religion is not about belief system. All religions started as a method to turn inward. But it's an inward step. An inward step can be taken only by an individual, isn't it so? It's a very intimate thing, something very, very concerned with only with you and nothing else to do with anybody else. But when people try to organize this inward step, naturally it gets distorted. Now we want to do our religion on the street. Religion cannot be done on the street, it can only be done within you. If you become truly religious, you must be beyond any kind of conflict, isn't it? Both within and outside. That is the whole crux of the religion, isn't it? But today religion means conflict. If you utter the word religion, you are talking generally in terms of conflict that is happening in the world, isn't it? This is because you have reduced an inward step into a set of beliefs. Because if you have to take an inward step, you have to transform yourself. If you have to believe something, you don't have to transform yourself. You can do whatever nonsense you want and still believe God is up in the heaven, isn't it? Yes? The crudest people, the cruelest people on the planet have always been talking about God, isn't it so? Yes or no? All the warmongers in the world have been talking about God, isn't it so? And God has been helping them. <coughs> See, the moment you believe something, you have a new kind of confidence, that's the biggest problem. When idiots become very confident, the world is in danger. An intelligent person is constantly hesitating with life. With every step he wonders whether what he is doing is okay or not. But a fool has absolute confidence and when his stupidity gets stamped by God, that's it. No looking back just can go on doing the most idiotic things without any problem about it. The very nature of your intelligence is such that if you do something stu stupid today, tonight your intelligence will bother you, why did I do this? Isn't it so? But if you get God's stamp on your stupidity, you don't have to turn back and see. You can do grossest things on the planet and not bother about it, feel very proud that you are anyway going to go, go to heaven because you did all this nonsense. There is no experiential dimension, you are just believing something. Once you believe something, your belief and somebody else's belief are bound to clash somewhere. The conflict in the world is not between good and evil, please see this. Though people always claim it is so, it is not true. It is always one man's belief versus another man's belief. So religion has become a problem because we have reduced it into just a set of beliefs. If it was experientially true that you really felt God, then could there be conflict? There is no such possibility, isn't it? But uh, because you are growing from a belief system, you are not willing to make the effort of going beyond what you have gathered from others and looking at life by yourself, 
that is why there is conflict. If you do not know, there will be no conflict. If you know, there will be no conflict at all. But when you pretend to know, there is bound to be conflict. Uh, very, very interesting perspectives from two great people. And these guys are doing right by whatever they believe in, you know. Um, I don't know, you really, really have to respect each opinion and the way it comes. You can't, um, I always say, I feel like I don't, I personally don't feel the need to compare the two of them. They practice different religions, they believe different things, and they should be respected in those things that they believe in. Uh, but when it comes to their advice, um, I'll actually take both their advice if I'm being honest, because there's always something to learn from someone about Dr. Zaki Naik answering the guy before I even go to that you have to have an open mind in this world you just can't and survive believing one thing that's why when I think about um, Islam I love how they're always referring to the Bible how they talk about the Jews they just don't throw away that knowledge that existed before Islam itself they get something from there and talk about it and then when you come to Sadhguru he's also saying something similar if you listen carefully because he's talking about you just can't um, say this is the best pencil in the world you haven't even tried other pencils and other um, sizes you know you just can't rely on one thing and say you know everything in life I feel like that's ignorance and to get rid of that ignorance you have to learn from other people, see how they think, see how that is written, and then decide, saying, okay, this makes sense, I'll go with it. I feel like that's what both of them were trying to say at the end of this video. I don't know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on the video? Um, your opinion on religion? Your opinion on the question Dr. Zaki Naik was asked and what Sadhguru had to say? And yeah. Let me know down below. I'll be more than glad to read you guys' comments. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.